Hello, everybody. So today I'm going to tell you how to apply for an ITIN if you're living in South Korea. If you're married to a non American and want to file your taxes online, then you will need an INTN number if you do not have a social security number for them. There are two ways that you can apply for an ITIN in Korea. The first way is just mailing in the W 7 application with your taxes, or the second way is using an agent in Korea. If you check the IRS website, you'll be able to find the list of acceptance agents in your country. When I contacted the agent, he wanted about 300,000 won. I thought it was too expensive, so I just decided to fill out the form myself. When you apply for an ITIN, you need to provide supporting documentation for your spouse's identity. You can mail their passport in with the application, but I didn't feel comfortable mailing my husband's passport to the IRS because I don't know how long it will take to get it back. If you don't want to send in the original passport, then you need to get a certified copy of your spouse's passport. You need to make an appointment at the U.S. Embassy, but these days, because of the situation, we cannot go to the Embassy. If you check on the Embassy website at all of the appointments for notarial services, there are like no appointments available. Since there were no appointments available, I had to email the embassy. I emailed them saying I needed my Korean husband's passport certified for tax purposes. I will be applying for an ITIN, so I just asked if I could mail my passport to the embassy to get it certified as soon as possible. The embassy replied really quickly the next morning. They sent me a list of what I needed to send to them and also how I could send my documents to them. These are the things that I needed to send to the embassy. My husband's passport, my 2020 tax documents, a $50 money order, and a memo requesting a certified copy. For my tax documents, I used TurboTax to fill out everything. On TurboTax, there are two options. You can choose e-file and file by mail. And obviously we cannot e-file because we need the ITIN number. So when you get to the end of TurboTax, then you can just hit file by mail and then print out all of those documents. You're also going to need a $50 money order. And I made a separate video about how to get a money order. So I'll link it down below if you guys need information on how to get that. After I printed out my tax documents and got my money order, I just included a little memo. The memo just stated that I needed my husband's passport certified for tax purposes. I also printed out my email conversations I had with the embassy person and I included those with all of my documents. After you have all of your documents, then you need to send them to the U.S. Embassy. They have a courier service you can use on their website. Once you go on the website, you need to fill out the information and make an appointment for them to pick up your documents. You will need to fill out your name, address, phone number, and put the address for the embassy where you are sending your documents to. I made a reservation for my documents to be picked up the next day. They will call you in the morning and tell you what time they will arrive to pick up your documents. You don't need to have any envelope. They will put your documents in their own envelope. So when the guy came, I just handed him my documents. Make sure you have cash because you will have to pay the delivery fee when they arrive. The delivery fee was about 8,000 won for them to pick up my documents and then deliver them back to me. After I paid, I got a receipt with tracking information and this information you can track on Naver to see when your documents have been delivered. In Naver, you can search Eun Song Jung Jung Bo Jo Hee. You can find the tracking information from any delivery company. Here, I'm just going to choose Il Young. 
then you can go ahead and put in your tracking number and find out if your documents have been delivered. The courier service took about three business days and I got my documents back very quickly. They will probably call you before they deliver your documents. In my case, the delivery guy just knocked on my door and left them in front of my apartment. Now that I have everything, I'm going to send my application and my tax documents to the IRS. You can visit your local post office and send your documents through EMS. When you get to the post office, you need to find the EMS document form. This blue and orange one is the non-document form. So make sure you are grabbing the correct form. It should say document on the top left corner. So please check it carefully. You need to fill out the form in English. So write your name, telephone number, address, all in English. And then for the green box, contents, write documents, quantity one, value zero. Since I am applying for an ITIN, I need to mail my documents to the ITIN PO box. So please be careful that you're not sending your documents to the IRS for filing taxes, but that you're sending it to the correct address for ITIN processing. The post office has envelopes available. It's really cheap. It just costs about $150 and they will add the cost onto your EMS price. After everything is ready, they will put it in another EMS envelope and check the weight. For the envelope and EMS charge, it was about 25,351. The post office lady said that my documents may arrive within one week or it could take up to one month until they arrive in USA. Okay everyone, so that was the process that I did to apply for my ITIN number. I will do a part 2 video whenever I receive the ITIN number. I think it may take about 2 or 3 months or longer, I'm not sure. I did put my Korean address on the W7 application, so hopefully everything is okay and the ITIN number comes to Korea with no problem. Thanks everyone for watching and if you have any questions about how to apply for the ITIN, please feel free to message me or leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Bye-bye!